So Teo, which of the eight cognitive functions is the most interesting to you? I have to admit I have a really soft spot for TI, introverted thinking. Wow. Um, I've always found it to be extremely interesting, um, not only in myself, but also in other people, um, because it has this really, really attractive energy to me. I'm attracted to uh, talking to people who use a lot of TI. Mm. Keep going. No, I know there's more there. Mm -hmm. There's quite a lot. I mean, I've noticed that um, usually the child function is quite easily stimulated by um, external input. Um, and there was even a theory that when um, you've got a blind spot somewhere, so in the case of INFJ, that's TE, extroverted thinking, um, the child function, which is basically alone because of the blind spot that is missing, is operating purely and innocently and naively into something, right? So I think that's why we often uh, feel very attracted to people who have our child function because they kind of show to us um, how it's like to use that function more. And the child is very curious to understand more about um, how it's like to grow up and be mature um, if we are to speak in archetypes. So I often find that I connect with uh, TP personality types because of their usage of TI. And the kind of conversations that I have with them tend to be really um, interesting, dynamic, and they make me like want to think about something a little bit more than maybe I would have normally done it. Because, um, you know, TI is very good at asking questions to check whether uh, the logical component is correct, whether the logical component fits into the picture. Mm -hmm. And I find that the more time I spend with um, TI heavy people, the better I become at doing that as well. Um, and I'm going to take a few steps back um, and share this um, experience that I had when I was in university um, studying psychology. All of the professors were really obsessed with critical thinking, right? When you're doing some sort of science, you have to be critical in your thinking. And back then it was quite difficult for me to logically question everything that I was reading. But I found that the more time I spent doing that and the more lectures and seminars we had about that specific topic, the easier it became. Um, and I think that's an extremely useful skill. And <laughs> I think I can be proud of TI for helping me uh, doing that, basically. And just for my audience clarification, she's talking about INTPs and ISTPs, which like dominant introverted thinking types, um, mm -hmm. which is so funny. Like I had all these you know, of course, in my head, like, she's going to say this. And of course, I was like, she's definitely going to say introvert intuition. Like, isn't that the coolest one? Because it's her lead function. But I'm really glad that you threw me a curveball. I was like, introverted thinking, because I find that the sort of hardest one to describe to other people, mm -hmm. um, where it's like, frameworks, models, mental models, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, what is the framework that you use for anything like for example like mm -hmm. i kind of use the example of if you're a salesperson and you mm -hmm. have introverted thinking high up in your stack you have in your head like here are the three things to close a sale and that's like your model but mm -hmm. it's not it might not be your sales manager's model or the company's but like you know because you've refined it and you've just dialed it in mm -hmm. what it is so that is that is really cool now since it's since you're an INFJ and that's your your child slot, is that something that you're aspiring to be better at introverted thinking? Explain that. I feel like I was aspiring to be better at introverted thinking before, um, and I've actually focused a lot on that. I'm also in a relationship with a TI hero type, so I feel like my TI is constantly stimulated. Okay. Um, I run a business with an ENTP, so someone who also values TI quite a lot. So I feel like this constant interaction with TI types um, has really pumped up my TI. And especially in the last year or so, um, I've noticed that I became much more confident in using it. I still get a little bit tired, and I think that's quite natural for the child function because I like using it and it's exciting. But if I'm tired, I fall back into FE and that comes naturally to me. Um, that's something that I can easily and naturally do without thinking about it. It's still aspirational in the sense that sometimes I really want to kind of push FE away and say, okay, no more drama from people. 
no more absorbing of everyone else's emotions, no more putting other people first all the time. And TI gives this sense of relief, you know, like I can be logical and analytical. I can focus on bringing NI and TI together and trying to understand something in depth. And that really, really makes me feel very happy. Um, you know, there's also this theory that your hero and child function are the functions that you draw positive resources from, hmm. whereas the second and fourth function kind of take resources away from you. Hmm. And that makes sense, right? Because if you're an introvert, the introverted functions pump you up. And if you're an extrovert, the extroverted functions deplete you. Um, and that's and kind vice of- vice versa, okay. Yeah, and vice versa, exactly. I can see that. Yeah, I mean, I'm N-I-F-I. So it's like, okay, yeah. yeah. Inspiration for like myself, the vision of like an idealized hero, uh, idealized mm -hmm. version of myself. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can yeah. conceptually be like, this makes sense. I've not heard yeah. that though. So interesting. Yeah, yeah. So um, why do you, mm -hmm. what is your reason for why it's important to know your type? It's not just about understanding your MBTI type, but in general about understanding yourself. I don't think there's anything more important in the world than understanding yourself and understanding other people, because the more you do that, the happier you are, the more satisfied you are, the less conflicts you have, the more empathy and understanding um, you receive. You know, I think we all have these moments when we get very frustrated at other people, like, why is this person not understanding me? Why is this person so weird or something, <laughs> right? Yeah. But when you see type, it's so much easier to understand. And like, not only like not get so upset about certain things, but also kind of adapt the way that you speak um, or the things that you say. Like, for example, if you are um, interacting with an intuitive, you know, you can um, highlight more ideas or conceptual things and they will like click with you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you a sensor it's better to give practical concrete examples because they will also um, vibe with that mm -hmm. and I feel like doing this in my work before because I used to work in human resources um, really helped me deal better with clients candidates co-workers uh, kind of speak their language you know absolutely and that's that's the thing about yes. it is the language and then once you learn the language of both like how to talk about type and then how to use type and then how to speak to people in their language yeah. Yeah, it just makes things easier, more compassionate. Mm -hmm. People aren't trying to sabotage you or miscommunicate with you in a way. So that's like the first okay. thing that I tell people. So of course we have to address the critics and which is fine. And there's actually not that many. It's just a very loud bunch of minority against <laughs> MBTI. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you, you know, they like to attack the dichotomies, E versus I, N, S, and so on and so forth. Um, the problem is that they're never really truly addressing the cognitive functions, what you were mentioning, T, I, F, E, N, I, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and that, that's really the heart and soul of MBTI. That's the depth psychology. That's where I think once you learn that, you break away. If, like It's the deepest personality assessment you can, you can do. I don't think, even though Enneagram is great, it doesn't go as deep. Yeah. Um, how are we supposed to address this issue of you're attacking a part of MBTI that's not the real heart and soul of it? Yeah, I'm with you there. Um, I think this issue has been widely uh, pushed forward because of the fact that so much content online does not focus on cognitive functions. Like if you're on Instagram, sometimes even on YouTube, but more so on Instagram, a lot of content becomes very stereotypical. People talk about being an extrovert and being an introvert, but I don't even believe necessarily in those concepts. I believe in which part of yourself is extroverted and which part of yourself is introverted, right? So I feel like the more content we bring that talks about cognitive functions and does so in, a, in an unbiased way, which is what I try to do with my own work because I value people no matter what type they are. And I try to make videos on YouTube and also Instagram posts that describe cognitive functions and types um, in, in a balanced way, right? Because mm -hmm. all types have pluses and minuses. And I feel like if more people were to do that, we would kind of fight with this, um, like, issues that some people might have with MBTI. But, of course, we cannot stop people who post very stereotypical things from posting them. They have their right to do so. <laughs> Sure. And some yeah. of them are funny and right. 
and stereotypes are based on reality. So it's like, it must, yeah. there must be a pattern within this type that seems to come out, which is funny. Yeah. And obviously all the types shouldn't take themselves too seriously. Of course. Um, I think there is a, like for the INTJ, like I don't get upset when everyone thinks that like you're an evil mastermind or that you have no social skills. Like that's, that's a part of it. There's a part of it. Mm-hmm. So let's not get upset at it. Like there's a spectrum mm-hmm. of type that exists out there. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You mentioned your YouTube channel. Why should people subscribe to your channel? My goal with my YouTube channel is to encourage people to reflect on themselves because I really, really value self-reflection and self-awareness. I think they're some of the most important components um, in just your psychological well-being, basically. Um, And my channel is there to help people gain a better insight into why they are in a certain way, why they think in a certain way and why other people think in a different way. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to bring, as I said, a balanced, respectful and relatively objective perspective. Even though I have my subjective opinions, I try not to push them too much because I want people to take the information and interpret it themselves. Um, through their own lens, through their own critical thinking, as I said earlier. Uh, Because if we don't do that, we end up um, pushing some really, let's say, negative views. And that will make other people feel uncomfortable that we're pushing our type views onto them, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And I just want to add something. Um, Even though recently there's been quite a lot of scientific studies using MBTI, which makes me very happy that the scientific community grows here, because back when I was in university, my professors were quite against MBTI for the reasons that you mentioned earlier, right? But it's still quite an early stage, let's say, in the scientific studies. So all of these things that we talk about still need to be refined, um, and we need to keep that in mind when we talk about these things, because otherwise we might end up doing more harm than good, in my opinion. Absolutely. Yes. And I, I do think that um, there is, there's going to be someone um, that I'm interviewing soon that's done huge work in quantitative analysis on MBTI mm-hmm. in her own work as a, mm-hmm. like a psychologist, psychotherapist, and as a mm-hmm. doctor herself, that's going to be pretty right. groundbreaking where it's going to be like, dang, now that now that scientific, that, like that, that bias that's not scientific is going to like mm-hmm. slowly be chipped away at like we're, we're, we're coming for you all. Like eventually it's going to be because you got that and then you got Dario Nardi with neuroscience and you're like, yeah. man, there's so much that's like, but also that's still relatively unknown. So it's, of course. that's not mainstream yet. So people like yeah. you and I with our channels and our, our networks and just kind of like the new guard should be just catapulting that stuff out there. This is, I like this question because it's fun. And it always gets good answers. So like if you were putting together your team for like a project, um, any endeavor activity that you were a part of, you're leading this team. Mm -hmm. You are one of the types, but who are the four other types on your team that you would choose? Um, I've noticed the types that I click the best with are ENTP, ISTP, ENFJ, and ISFJ probably. Maybe INTP as well would come in fifth. Um, But I feel like this team would have a relatively balanced um, interaction and work style because we've got intuitives and sensors. We've got thinkers and feelers, extroverts and introverts, perceivers and judges. We've got both NESI and NISE. But um, I've noticed that people work together a little bit better if they share their feeling thinking preference. Like, it seems to me that their communication is a little bit eased by that. So that's why it seems to me that it's a a little bit easier for me to vibe with FETI users. Maybe because of my passion for TI, I don't know. It could be. Are you saying that it needs to be in the same slot or same, or just like they share in their top four? In their top four. Okay. So FJs and TPs together and then TJs and FPs together they seem to find it easier to like communicate with each other. I think you might be the first one who's not chosen ENTJ. Oh, okay. Just because I feel like that, that tends to be like, well, if we're doing something, we at least need TE present Mm -hmm. in case like Mm -hmm. all of us go off somewhere and need to be 
you know, corralled. So that's, that is just another fascinating thing. I have all these like preconceptions of what people are going to say, like, Oh, it's probably going to be this, this, and this. And then you choose all the ones that I wouldn't think. So that is interesting. Do you think yeah. that there would be enough like extrovert of thinking to get things done? Probably not, but I have a sensitivity in working with extroverted thinking because um, I don't always feel comfortable um, working on a project with it. I've done so um, at my previous jobs, right? but it makes me feel very stressed and anxious if, if there's a tea hero working closely next to me. Um, and that's probably, I don't know, because tea is not something I, I value very much in my ego. Um, it's part of my shadow. So it makes me feel very uncomfortable. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. No, that's, um, I like embracing the shadow in terms of like ENT. See, I would choose an ENTP for sure. Mm-hmm. Into, like to, to, as my shadow type, because it's like, mm-hmm. they're going to be great where I'm, I'm bad. Mm-hmm. So like, I want mm-hmm. that, but it's interesting how like certain types, my, eh, I don't know if I want that so mm-hmm. heavily w- on my team working directly next to me, because yeah. I think the fear is they're going to just start dominating mm-hmm. everything. And then there's yeah. going to be no cohesion within the team. I mean, I would probably work with an ENFP, um, but not so much with a T hero type. So okay. that's a subtle difference there. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because um, as we, you know, you and I know a lot of my audience, because I've talked about a lot is this, you know, the idea that Western cult- culture capitalism is very, t- mm-hmm. you know, ESTJ dominated yeah. expert thinking. So like corporate America wants it, you need it, you have to have yeah. it. But like yeah. when you're working with it in a like more personal or passion project, we don't need it as much. Yeah, I feel like TE is incredible in the corporate world um, mm-hmm. on leadership managerial positions. I've interacted with so many uh, managers in the past with my HR job, and it's incredible how many of them were TJ types, especially mm-hmm. ETJ types. Um, but considering that I'm working as a freelancer, and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Right. I don't really feel the need for that. I would love to have some tea myself. That would be amazing. Uh, Sometimes I'm really frustrated that I don't have more grasp of that function. Um, And when I try to use it, it comes out in a pathetic way. Um, But yeah, I don't, I don't vibe so well with TE um, in projects. Okay. Excellent. No, that's, that's just a great, um, so eloquent about talking about it. Mm So um, do you want to let my audience know, Anything else before we end the show? Um, There's this idea that I've been recently thinking about quite a lot. Um, I I don't have like data to back it up, but just Mm -hmm. my intuition talking here. Um, I've noticed that there seems to be a really amazing connection between the cognitive functions that are part of a pair. So NI and SE, NE and SI and so on. Because there's always um, like a teamwork going on there. NI does not exist without SC and SC does not exist without NI, right? Um, And sometimes it seems incredibly interesting how opposite types, um, opposite in terms of the four letters, um, start migrating towards each other the more um, they progress into life and the more they mature. And I think that's because an imbalance in our hero function always causes an imbalance in our inferior function. Um, I imagine this like a swing, right? Um, mm-hmm. And if you're not balanced in your like swing, you will go from one extreme to the other. And that will cause a lot of um, similarities between uh, people who have the same functions as their first and fourth, even though they're reversed. Um, th- their middle functions remain the same, but the opposite ones kind of stimulate each other in a similar way. And I find that fascinating. And I really feel like studying it further. Oh, um, absolutely. I'm thinking of even doing a PhD at some point, because I've got some ideas about this. So totally. who knows, maybe in a few years. That, that, will, that would be awesome. Happen. And um, I just recently interviewed John Beebe. I, I think mm-hmm. you might be aware of him. And he, yeah, he yeah, kind of came up with like the spine and axis model where it's like, mm-hmm. N I and S E is the spine of your personality and the, or whatever N E S I is like, are their spines and like, they're always like push pull and they're always like trying to like exactly. pull each other back like a seesaw or whatever, whatever you like the swing is great pendulum 
That's exactly my, my perspective. Yeah. Tons of stuff on that as well. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to be interviewing um, someone else who's an ESFP, which I'm, I've, I've never met one that yes. I know. So I'm really excited. And she is actually the same as an INTJ in the top four. It's just a little bit different order. And it's like, well, that's fascinating because that is, if you saw us both in the wild, you would never be like, well, they're completely opposites. Them, but like, there's no way they're the same, but actually we're pretty close. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, for instance, ISTPs and ENFJs, because I have quite a few of them in my life, on the outside, they seem extremely different. The ENFJ is bubbly and talkative and mm-hmm. extroverted, right? The ISTP is more withdrawn and serious. But if you talk to them and get to know them, you'll see that they have extremely similar fears and insecurities. And that's because of the hero inferior dynamic in mm-hmm. my view. Um, same with INFJ and ESTP, with INTJ and ESFP and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot there. There's a lot there to, to, yeah. to pull out of that. And I mean, do you need to get a PhD to explore that or? <laughs> well, I feel like doing it simply because um, I want to do it properly um, and I'm quite interested in neuroscience as I started studying it in, in university. So I kind of want to take it further. Um, and I'm thinking of doing that in a few years, maybe when the pandemic is over. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think you'll do great at it and I would love to read it. So, and I think my audience yeah. would too. So Teo, I really appreciate you coming on the show with me. I think this is excellent. I, I appreciate you um, breaking the mold of what I thought you were going to say, which is great because that just stimulates better conversation. Um, but I appreciate your time today. And um, I'm going to put all the ways that uh, my audience can, you know, find your channel and, mm-hmm. you know, make sure there's no way that they don't know who you are and what you're about. Thank you very much for having me. It was a really stimulating conversation as well. And Absolutely. Maybe we'll, we'll talk again in the future. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you.